Hey everyone, welcome to The Alternates, a basketball show for the others where we like to showcase independent music and discuss all things basketball. We've got the return of a guest today. Very excited to have Natasha back in the studio with us. We are going to be hitting the headliners. We're going to play Start Today, which I'm excited to see how you handle that. And then we're going to be checking in with Clayton, the man himself, the road dog, as we play this week's Duo Jam. We've got all that and more coming up right after this song, which is The Answer Is No by Holy Cow from Baltimore off their self-released EP, literally released last night, came out last night. So click the Bandcamp link in the episode description so that you can check out the entire thing. This is off of their self-released cassette, The Answer Is No. We'll see you in just a moment. Well, we don't want to work. No, we don't. It's not fair to these people. These people are my friends and I care about them. What is up, y'all? Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. We, of course, are the alternates. I am your host, Brian Cullen, and with me is the return, the friend of the gods, the turkey tycoon, the milk matriarch, Natasha Dye. Yes, thank you so much. You got my uh, my credits correct. <laughs> yeah, I well, yeah, I, I had to look it up online, and yep. there was... A lot more than that, I got to be honest. But those are the ones I want you to say. Yeah, out those loud. are the yeah. key, the key names for sure. Thanks thank, for having me back. Thank you for coming back on. You are now with Zach as uh, the only return guest that we've had so far on the show. Wow. So you and Zach now are going to have to do some kind of like battle to yeah. death to find out who is going to be the new co-host of the show. I can take him. Wow. Okay. You hear that, Zach? <laughs> She's coming for you. <laughs> Before we jump into our first segment, I just want to take a quick second, ask you all to subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash the alternates. Like the video, that thumbs up makes me feel like I'm I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. I'll, I'm, will I be okay? Yeah, you're going to be okay. Well, depends. Hit that thumbs up and it might happen. You guys do it. If you are not checking us out on YouTube and you're listening to it as a podcast, wherever you're listening to that, hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with all things alt and if there's a rating and review option, hit us with one of those. Again, just want to feel like an okay person from time to time. And you could help me out by doing that. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can do so by emailing us thealternatehoop at gmail.com. You can follow the show on TikTok at the alternates MBA, or you can get a hold of us by dropping a comment in the comment section. And I will get back to you. I might even read your comment on the show. Yeah. Okay. Biggest break maybe anybody's ever gotten. Yep. I'm going to start commenting all the time. Yeah. Please, no big words, though. That's all I ask. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to double click and hit look up when I'm when I'm looking at the comment section. Keep those dollars. Keep those words two dollars or below. Five dollar <laughs> words not welcome. <laughs> Anyways, how are you, Natasha? Thank you for coming back to the show. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for having me. I'm great. I'm excited to do start today. I've been I mean, I'm excited. I won't say anything else. Okay. 
backed by popular demand. Oh, the people loved you. Thank you. Thank you. The people loved you. My they mother asked, loved this. Yeah. She asked me to bring you back and for me to leave, actually. She asked for me to just leave the show. <laughs> the which, only reason um, I'm back is because my mom asked Brian to please invite me back. Yeah. And if I'm being honest, it wasn't an ask. Okay. She yeah. told me it, it had to happen. That's okay. Thanks, mom. Or life would be absolute hell for me. <laughs> and I laughed and I said, it already is, lady. So let's get into headliners. <laughs> let's do it. First headline here. I put this one in here because kind of low key, maybe not so much called it. Yeah. We talked about a 70 point game. I said it was going to be somebody random. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a 70 point game. Sorry to disappoint, but it was the eighth 50 point game in the month of March in the league by Sadiq Bay. Who had that on their bingo card? Sadiq, I did. Oh. <laughs> so he got 51 over the magic. I only say that because I'm a huge Sadiq Bay fan. Yeah. I play fantasy basketball, mm -hmm. <laughs> breaking news, and <laughs> he's the only player that I've had all season on my watch list. Yeah, but you're not that good at fantasy basketball, Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am not. I'm such a like curmudgeon, like, you know, I, I will stand by my team. I, I It's so hard for me to drop players. The absolute worst strategy in fantasy basketball. Yeah, yeah, well, because I'm like, oh, fan this is my fantasy is being yeah. a GM, not fantasy basketball yeah. GM. No, I get that. So I would be a great, I just want to say this right now. I would be a great GM, just not in fantasy. That's so, true. Um, well, as long as you're having fun, that's the point. Yeah, let's move on. Um, so, yeah, I absolutely horrific, horrific at it. But Sadiq Bay 51, I love this one because it's kind of like the alternates battle, right? Like yeah. everybody has that second team or that bad team that they love. For Clayton, he's been so high on the Pistons. For me, inexplicable love for the Magic. Hurts that this happened to my Magic. Yeah, was it not fun to watch because it was happening to them? <laughs> Look, I'm happy anytime I get to see Orlando play. Okay. I love that team Aww. so much. That's cute. And I love Sadiq Bay. So it was it was a better it was, you know, watching your kids fight, but when yeah. one of them beats the other one to like an absolute like unrecognizable pulp, you're still kind of like that's my boy, right? <laughs> I get so it. So I had that moment. That's that's a parenting thing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, no it is. So I was happy for Sadiq Bay. Mhm. Mm um but you did not respond to my text message. It's the second time I'm bringing this up today. Uh I said, "Yeah, he's Bay," as in B A E, as in before anyone else, and Brian did not text back <laughs> yeah well as i said i'm very old and curmudgeonly and i was like i don't she misspelled that i don't know what that has to turn the vcr on and i was just having not even a liked life. not even a liked but you I don't, guys, okay so i let's talk bae. about i don't do that i don't do the double tap reaction to things because it, when it happens to me it feels so passive aggressive i rejected it for a long time but sometimes that's just like if you don't have anything else to say you just like it and then they go away i keep it old school i hit you with a haha -ha cool you, there was no haha -ha cool to my bay joke so <laughs> i would have preferred a, a liked a haha -ha. it would have been so easy but that's okay that's why i'm repeating it here for everyone else to laugh at great 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 content i <laughs> hope everybody else double taps and likes hit that thumbs up for her joke yes uh, thank you. we're both seeking validation with the thumbs up here isn't that what we're doing here mutually beneficial <laughs> let's move on okay lebron james mm -hmm. who you feel so bad for pass it you said it on the last episode yeah well, that day i did <laughs> passes carl malone to become the second on the scoring list mm -hmm. so i love this one for a few reasons one there was a few weeks ago he had passed all-time scoring list Kareem, but it was playoffs and regular mm -hmm. season. And we had this discussion about how it, it's cool. It adds to like an accolade, but like the real one is beating the regular season points scored. Yes. And when he, when he does that, which I think he is going to do, that's going to be the big celebration, but this gets him closer to that. I also love it because fuck Carl Malone. Yes. He's a terrible person. And I love that he gets a bit of a demotion here. So it's, it's, it's nice, but two birds, one stone. So I got to ask you because Last week when you were on the show, you said you were team LeBron, shut it down. Mm -hmm. And I did think about that a lot. I thought about it so much. I stopped responding to text messages <laughs> and I thought, OK, I get it. You're not, you know, doesn't look like you're contending for a championship this year, mm -hmm. this stage in your career. You probably want to shut it down if that's not happening. Mm -hmm. But then I see this and I think, well, maybe it doesn't have to be a complete gap year for you. Maybe you use this year to put those points up, to move up on those lists. And, and maybe you're not adding... A, a title to your legacy but you're adding other things to your complete legacy and maybe that's how lebron is looking at this and i'm okay with that i'm okay with that and you know i honestly now that he has done it i am even more team shut it down because <laughs> because like okay he did that the more you do the more we <laughs> shut it down yes exactly i i'm i love to shut things down um i think that me too that's why i didn't respond to that joke 
that's got to be it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that makes it makes way more sense now. Thanks. Yeah. Um, no, I just think. Okay, it's not going to happen this year for them. Like that's pretty sure, understood. Yeah, yeah. So why risk at thirty seven years old any kind of further injury when he's already like it's people debate and Michael Jordan or LeBron. It's not like scoring any more points is really going to the people that don't say that he's the goat aren't going to be convinced by him playing more. And this honestly, it looks like this season is more embarrassing than anything because it's like, yeah, you can score, but just knowing, I think if he hadn't had a hand in the Russell Westbrook trade, yeah, then maybe it would be different because it wouldn't be his mess. But Watching him, I i mean, I do feel bad watching him just get mauled by teams that should not be mauling LeBron James teams. So I, I don't know. I think just shut it down for now. Come back strong next season. And if you want to chase some more scoring titles, then great. But it just seems kind of pointless at this stage. I get it. But I, I do think that, that legacy means so much to him. I mean, I mean you but said But don't you think it's... this hurts the legacy? Losing all the time? <laughs> Losing, but like... At the end of the day, right, when we're looking at his career, we're not talking like, OK, he's come, Jordan, right? That's the other one. Mm -hmm. He's already said he's chasing the ghost in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning Jordan. Mm -hmm. Now, there was an entire documentary series called The Last Dance. And it basically was just and I love Michael Jordan, Jordan propaganda about how great he is. Right. We talk about, yeah, he's undefeated in the finals. Nobody talks about when he actually came back from retirement. He lost in the playoffs. That's something people forget about, that he lost to Orlando. I think it's more something that people just um, choose not to talk I know. about. I know, I especially like this generation, I think yeah. a lot of people forget that that happened or don't know. Like The story is basically told now, he retired for two years, came back, and went th three-peat again. People yeah. forget that there was that year before that second three-peat. And so I say that to say that like when we're looking at it, you know, first all-time scoring. We're not going to say, well, there was that one year with Russell Wilson where they lost a bunch of games. We're going to say, no, that dude scored a shit ton of points. He's the great, you know, the greatest. And and yeah, that argument is go on Twitter right now and just tweet out who's better, LeBron or MJ. Mm -hmm. And your fucking mentions are going to blow up. Great for engagement, by the yeah. way. But <laughs> it's well, but you also aren't. Uh, I mean, yes, you're and, correct. And so about I think that. he needs to add to that list. And and while I agree, you're not going to change a lot of people's minds here. Mm -hmm. I think it's harder to argue against when you have all of these other things right because you can always say six rings six rings six rings you could say you know five rings and all-time scoring five rings and number two and assist like whatever it is like mm -hmm. it's you're going to keep moving up on these lists and it's going to be harder and harder to make an argument against it and lebron's a guy from as a child was told this is your destiny this is who you are it's all he's ever known mm -hmm. so i think it's hard to turn that part off and go yeah forget about it i'll come back next year because we're talking about someone who's basically been manufactured to be the greatest ever yeah and, and that psyche on somebody i think is beyond what i at least i can comprehend and then you add the level of competitiveness to it absolutely i mean yeah, I don't think I could ever even come close to getting inside LeBron James's head or work ethic. But yeah. I also think an interesting aspect of this is like, yes, Jordan went to the Wizards and was bad, right? Yeah. But there was no social media then. Right. So it wasn't as widely documented, as widely discussed. Totally. Like this. So he's got to do more work. LeBron has to do more work. And I think that's what we're seeing. I think it's more that LeBron needs to take more careful steps because this is like, at the beginning of the season, I was like, oh, that's a bummer. It's going to like, you know, be a, a little notch on his legacy that he kind of sure. messed up this Lakers team. But the way that it's going is like every day he is turning Laker fans against him. He's turning just NBA fans against him. And I, I yeah, I just I don't think that it's worth it. Um, I think he if you asked maybe last season, I wouldn't have thought that it would be this bad. So mm. I get it. But it really is really bad. Yeah. Okay. And fair so I, I agree with you. And I, I do think, yes, in the like, you know, like 20 years when we look back or in like a last dance style documentary that like, yes, LeBron has all these accomplishments and accolades and that's amazing. But the way that this is being documented, including like the post game interviews also, I mean, just the way that he, he just defended, um, someone else and not Russell Westbrook. He just did, um, oh, Kyrie. Yeah. <laughs> he just tweeted free Kyrie, but he's, his, own teammate who he brought in is being harassed on the street yeah and lebron is silent about it so i think that this is 
I think it's just gonna it's gonna be, leave a, a more permanent stain than Michael Jordan's. Okay, on the that's Wizards. interesting. I think I think the biggest thing here is is fuck Karl Malone. So yes. let's go on to the next headline. We can agree on that. Golden State Warriors James Wiseman, his return to the team has been delayed yet again. This one is interesting to me because personally, I don't really think it means much to the Warriors right now. Right. Right. Like I I don't think bringing Wiseman back does a ton to move the needle in terms of contention, right? Steph is the one that uh, everybody's yes. looking at going, you need him to to do it. But I I keep, th- I think that the Warriors are going to try to make a move in the off season. Mm-hmm. And I think they're going to try to get Miles Turner. It's been reported that there's interest there. I was shocked that Turner didn't get moved at the trade deadline because Indiana is clearly trying to blow this thing up. Yeah. Warehouse you know, the, sale. Yeah. They got rid of Sabonis. Like, and, and it seems like things are okay, but I don't think that he's long-term with them. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to be there past the end of this year. And I think the Warriors, if there is a hole in this roster anywhere, it's having a rim protector. And look, Draymond's great, but he's the injuries are piling up. You keep playing him tons of minutes at the five. It's not going to make it easy on those injuries because you're going to get knocked around by seven-footers. And, and look, Draymond's the greatest defensive player I've ever seen play basketball. Mm-hmm. But you want to minimize the amount of minutes that he's playing there and, and the amount of damage so that you can use them in those small lineups when you need to. Yeah. Right. Especially because their big three will be a year older next season. Too. Exactly. And so if you're going to go get Miles Turner, I always thought Wiseman was going to be a piece to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Hard to sell the car when the car's not on the lot. <laughs> True. And so like the other pieces you look at, there are other assets on the team. Kaminga. Moody. Moody Moses Moses Moody Moody Moses Moody yeah whatever his name is <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, according to Perk um, is they've kind of solidified themselves into being important pieces with this team so it might be harder for the Warriors to move on from them yeah and so you want the value to be as high as possible on Wiseman but if you're not watching him play it's hard to put him in that trade what about throwing in like a Juan Tos- Toscano Anderson Maybe. I yeah. mean, seeing how the second half of the season has gone, maybe Wiggins is part of that deal. Yeah. But either way, it, it's you're still looking at it. The, the Pacers are going to want to get young, right? Right. And they're still going to want a big in mm-hmm. there somewhere, mm-hmm. which is where Wiseman comes in. Yeah. And it's going to be hard to move him without the highest value possible for him in the eyes of, of Indiana. It's tough to do when you're not watching him play basketball. Yeah, definitely. I wonder, though, if like, I mean, he he spoke for himself enough, I think, before that maybe Indiana would be willing to take a chance on him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. It's really hard to. It's just a tougher sell. To appeal. Absolutely. Yeah. And I do think you're right that Kaminga and Moody have become like really crucial pieces. Yeah. Um, Kaminga's f- and, fucking unreal. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, um, the cum bucket is his nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. Oh, okay, well, at su- <laughs> oh, wow. I was at summer league last summer, and um, my one of my best friends is a Warriors fan, and so he was like, he's like, oh, I hate that people are calling him that, and so I took every opportunity to be like, yes, the cum bucket. So big cum bucket fan. Um, Just know that that clip right there, that's going to be the promotion clip without any context. <laughs> Hashtag cum bucket. <laughs> <laughs> All um, <right. laughs> What kind of podcast is this, Brian? Uh, no, but I yes, I, I think that they are crucial pieces. Yeah. Um, but I would like to see Wiseman on the on the Pacers. I want to see him do well. Yeah. I want to see him do well. I just I hope that he can get you know these injuries kind of in line and and carve out a career for himself here because we've seen flashes of him being good. He was yeah. drafted extremely high. They were very high on him for a reason. So we'll see what happens there. This last one I've got is just a fun one. It just brought joy to my day. I know it did. And it was Yusuf Nurkic <laughs> throwing a fan's phone. I don't really have too many thoughts about the situation itself. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen it, just look up Nurkic throws phone or something. He yeah. walks up to a fan, grabs the phone out of his hands and throws it over the fan's shoulder. It made me so happy. I know it did, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I know it did. Um, the the fan looks like a child until you notice that he's holding a beer. So at first I was like, oh, that was kind of mean to a 16 year old. But no, 16 oh, year olds deserve it more than anybody. Yeah, actually, you're right. Um, that's true. Uh, no, I mean, it depends on what was. there was a lot of rumors about what was said and why. He yeah, I don't actually it. know what was said. Uh, I don't think anybody really does. Most people don't because yeah. there were a bunch of um, 
<laughs> Nurkic fans that were like, no, they were talking about his uh, late grandmother who passed away in the bubble. And like, if that's the case, then yeah, by all means, throw throw his should have thrown his beer in so his face. So you're buying the Nurk propaganda? Yeah, yes. Well, the Nurk agenda, the Nurk, the Nurkic gen, the, the Nurk, Nurkic agenda, the Nurk agenda, the Nurk agenda. The Nurk agenda. The Nurk agenda. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we figured that out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what, though? Actually, in the bubble, I was such a big Nurkic fan. Oh, I love Nurkic. I remember just tweeting the word Nurkic. <laughs> this is it. Just Nurkic. It's a fun name to say. It is a fun name to say. And he seems like such a cool guy. Like, yeah. I would I would have fun with him. Um, but yeah, if, if it was, if it gets personal, throw, whatever. But I mean, there were also some people the security guard who works at the arena went on Instagram and was like, Oh yeah. Um, actually he wasn't saying anything. He was just saying you suck. And like, if that's the case, just, just ignore it. You know, like there's fans that get, are going to get say that clout. My man, yeah. <laughs> get to Instagram. I, I'm, oh, I'm the security guard. Oh, he did. You know, he was waiting for a moment like that for to sure. just hop on Instagram and be like, I was there. Yeah. I love, I was there people, you know, <laughs> <laughs> people that are just like, yes, that happened. I was there. Yeah. Um, they have to let them know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was funny. It was. I am glad that you got a kick out of it. Oh, it brought so much joy to my day. Yes. Let's bring some more joy to everybody's Oof. day. Okay. And let's play Start Today. Let's go. I'm ready. So in this segment, we are going to take a look at the playoff bracket as currently stands, rosters as currently stands, and we're going to rapid th- fire, rapid fire through the eighth round until we got that here. We're going to rapid fire <laughs> say it again. through each round <laughs> until we get to a champion. We're crowning an NBA champion today. So this is, we're not doing the play-in tournament Mm-mm. because I'm an old curmudgeon. I think that's already been established. I agree. And we're just doing one through eight. Okay, let's go. I'm going to give you the Eastern Conference. Okay. That's I'm good. taking the West. Okay. We're going to start in the East. Those are the first tips of the of the, the day. So we're going to start there. So we start with the 1-8 matchup, mm-hmm. which I think is a very exciting matchup. I love this one. Yeah. It's the Miami Heat versus the Brooklyn Nets. Worth pointing out, Brooklyn Nets, they don't have home court, which actually plays in favor for them because yes. Kyrie's available for four of the games. The Heat, mm, we'll, no we'll Jimmy see. Butler. No Jimmy Butler. Mm-hmm. Well, he's he's day to day. Yes, but let's assume then that he doesn't play at least the first. Okay. Right? That feels fair. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going Nets. Nets. Yeah. Is I'm that because Nets. you get Kyrie for four of those games? Yeah, it is. Um. Is it, a, is it a quick series, or do you think the, the the Heat put up a bit of a fight here? No, I think they put up definitely put up a fight. Okay. Um, I, I'm big on the Heat. I just don't think if Kyrie's going to play, and like if they have some questionable injury, if the Heat have some questionable injuries, then I'm I'm going Nets for okay. sure. Okay, fair enough. I won't question that. Next, we've got the 2-7 matchup. Mm-hmm. The Sixers versus the Raptors. Mm-hmm. Sixers without Embiid, without Harden. And with Doc Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going Raptors. Raptors. I've enough said. Raptors are also a bit shorthanded too, though. No OG. Uh, I think Gary Trent is also out right now. They don't have Doc Rivers, though. I mean, Nick Nurse is, is a genius. Yeah. He's been, he was named to the Alt-Stars this year. Yeah. Good so, for him. Okay. <laughs> well, yep, we're going felt Raptors. Felt backhanded, but I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> then we've got the 3-6 matchup. The Bucks versus the Cavs. Who you got? Um, I love the Cavs this year. They, I think they've way, not even way overachieved, but they've, they've had a great season, um, for their, you know, what we thought we, they would do, but I'm going Bucks. Okay. Um, I mean, the Cavs are great. I just don't see them. It's an easy pick. Pulling it off. All right. And then last four or five, I think maybe the funnest matchup in the first round here. You've got the Celtics versus the Bulls. This one is hard. Um, the Bulls still without Lonzo Ball. Yes. Celtics basically healthy. Yeah. And on a roll, on a tear. Like they are just, they're doing it. Snaps for the Celtics. You're pushing the agenda for me right now. (laughs) I've been on this, I've been on this wagon for weeks. Uh huh. I was mocked mercilessly when I first brought it up. And now people are understanding where I was coming from. You were ahead of your time. Yeah. Um, Genius, but yeah, keep going. (laughs) I'm going Celtics. Celtics. Yeah. That's what I would pick too. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do think that it's a scrappy series. Absolutely. I think at least six. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised with a seven. I, it's tough because I love both of these teams. Zach but Levine can. Boston has the momentum right now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. And fair I think enough. it's time for them. You know what I mean? Like, I think that they yeah. have, that is like on their side. They figured it out. Yes. They yes. started rough and they figured it out. Yeah. 
It's kind of the opposite story of the Bulls, who yes. are like struggling right now, but started yeah. incredible. Okay, we're going out east. Okay, you I'm mean sorry, west. we're going out west. Yes. Whatever, man. We're going to the other side. Direct. Yeah, it's it's a sphere. There's no <laughs> east or west. So we're starting in Phoenix, and they're taking on your Los Angeles Clippers. Mm-hmm. No Chris Paul. No Paul George. Mm-hmm. No Kawhi. Mm-hmm. No Norm. No Norm. I think um, I got to take Phoenix here. Wait. No Jay Crowder. No Jay Crowder. No Cam. No campaign. Pain. No Cam Johnson. The cams are out. The cams are out. Cam off. Cam- <laughs> like the cam. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So I think I'm still taking Phoenix to win this series. Okay. Both teams missing a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. I think it comes down to who the best player on the floor is. And Devin Booker, I think, is the best player on the floor currently. And look, he's been given the business by Paul George. If Paul George is active, I think I, I look at this differently. Mm-hmm. I just think it's, I mean, look, the Clippers offense has been really bad lately. They've been struggling. They look beat up. You disagree with that? <laughs> Convince no, I just me don't. that their offense has looked good. No, I just don't like you saying it out loud. It's <laughs> tough. It's tough, but this is the reality. This is where we're at. Yeah, okay. I think Phoenix wins this series. I think Devin Booker and Aiton are enough to get it done for them. That's your choice. Plus they have Bridges, who is going to be... In the defensive player of the year conversations, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm taking the Suns. We're moving on because I can feel yeah, just the just ire right now. <laughs> We're going to an interesting one: uh-huh. the Memphis Grizzlies versus the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, that's a hard one. Jaw just got hurt. Jaw just got hurt. Yes, which makes us. I would pick. I wouldn't even blink. I would say Grizzlies. Without <laughs> Jaw, they're still very good. Yeah. Seven game series, I think it's tough to do. And they're young. Jokic is incredible. Yeah. I think I'm going with the Nuggets on this one. I think they put up a fight. Yeah. But without Jaw, I just think it's really hard for them to do. Look, Desmond Bain has been great. Triple J has been great. I just. I've never heard him called that. Oh, really? Well, it makes sense because yeah. Jaron Jackson. It, there there are it. three J's, in fact. Yes. Yeah, three yeah. J. But yeah. Triple J, I like it. Yeah. J cubed. Wasn't that four? Is it? What's three? Try. I don't know. I'm trying right now. So <laughs> This is not a math so, <laughs> so I'm taking the nuggets. We're going to move on. Then we've got the Warriors mm-hmm. versus the Wolves. Battle of the W's. No Steph. No Steph. No Iguodala. Mm-hmm. No Wiseman. I think I'm taking the Wolves. But isn't there no Cat? Cat is questionable. But I also think that the momentum is so great and I, and I also think the Warriors are missing their best player. Yeah. And I believe that the Wolves are missing their second best player in Cat. I'm that high on, on Anthony Edwards. Mm-hmm. I think that they get past this first round. And look, the Warriors have struggled with the Wolves this year. The Wolves have kind of had yeah. their number a little bit. Yeah. Without Steph, I think it's very hard to get past that. So I'm going, I'm going Wolves. Yeah. I think... I. I think that's smart. Okay. Pat Bev is going to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, he's the one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then we've got Utah versus Dallas. I'm taking Dallas. Okay. Just straight up, I'm taking Dallas. I would agree. I also think they have a, it's time that they get past the first round. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know what? Look, the Jazz have gotten a lot of shit on this show. And they are good. I think that we, I need to give them credit. They are good. The Jazz just continue to get shit on on this show. Last yeah. week we were talking about Brian. It happens every episode. <laughs> and I've really, uh, Utah fans, I'm so sorry if there's anybody still watching. Um, but I just, Luca, look, I think I said this last time we played, there, there was this matchup. The Jazz struggle against teams that can go small. Mm-hmm. And I think that the Mavs have the players to make it difficult to keep Gobert on the floor. And without Boyan Bogdanovich's scoring, it's going to be very hard for them to keep up in this series. Mm-hmm. With with Boyan, I might think a little bit differently about it just because he is their second best scorer. Yeah. Conley out. I, I've, I've got to go with Dallas on this one. Yeah, the maps have really put together a good few games. Somehow they're doing it. Yeah. I don't, I have zero faith in Jason Kidd, but somehow they're doing it. Well, maybe right. it, Chris stops leaving helped them. I think that helped out a lot, yeah. actually. <laughs> All right, we're going to go back east okay. where we've got the Boston Celtics versus the Brooklyn Nets. And remember, the Celtics, they've got home court here. Yeah, but that is a plus for the Nets. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I'm going Nets. Okay. 
I think twice about this one, but I get it. I get it. I'm very confident. Okay. Lamarcus Aldridge bang out doesn't doesn't change anything for <laughs> no, you. No, I dropped him from my fantasy league. He is <laughs> oh, very well then. inconsistent. Well, then the Nets for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, uh, no, but no, it's the Nets. Okay, all right. That's all I'll say. I won't question it. Yeah, thank Katie and Kyrie. Yeah, fair enough. All right, next we've got the Toronto Raptors versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Yes. I mean, it's the Bucks. Bucks, yeah. The I Raptors can only go so far. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, no OG. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Back out to the West. Mm-hmm. Where we've got your Phoenix <laughs> Suns. Uh, I don't. Versus no. your Dallas no. Mavericks. I've, no, I'd like to unsubscribe <laughs> from both of those. I am taking the maps. Okay. There's nothing I can do about that. Look, here's here's my here's where I'm at with this, okay? Cuz the Suns are great. They got past a very hobbled Clippers team in the first round. Mm-hmm. Dallas is really only missing one guy. And They've been great. Tim Hardaway. Yeah, they're okay. missing Tim Hardaway yeah. Jr. They've been great without Tim Hardaway Jr. Mm-hmm. They haven't really missed a beat without him. Yeah. So we're essentially looking at a healthy team. Luca, I think, presents enough trouble for them with the pieces that Phoenix is currently missing. Yeah. I think they went out. Yeah. And Dallas has some really good shooting, too. I mean, Maxi Kleber is great from three. And yeah. he's been really defensively great this season too yeah yeah I, yeah their defense has been the biggest surprise to me yeah okay and then we've got the denver nuggets versus the timberwolves wolves i'm going wolves you're uh, you know what i i think that's correct i think Look, that's the right choice Jokic has been great i just think that there is more overall talent in minnesota right now yeah without kpj without uh Murray. Yes. I just don't think Denver has enough to keep up with them. And we always say momentum is everything going to the playoffs. And I don't know a team that has more momentum than the Wolves right now in the NBA. Yeah. And I think Jokic has done an amazing job so far this season, obviously, but it's just, it's a lot for one guy to keep doing. Yeah. Especially after taking on, um, in this case, it would have been the Grizzlies. Yeah. 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 No, I think I think that's probably as far as he can take it. Okay, all right. And we get to the East Finals. Okay. Brooklyn Nets versus the Bucks. Okay. Who's winning? Oh gosh. The Nets. Is that because they're That's because Kyrie can play. Okay. And that's because I think that they are going to be mad about last year. Mm. And I don't think KD is going to let that happen again. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Wow, so we have an eight seed going to the finals. Yes, we do. Okay. In my world. Okay, in your world, yeah. which is where we're living right now. <laughs> yep. Let's go back. Let's find out who's going to be representing the West. Okay. We've got your Dallas Mavericks versus my Minnesota Timberwolves. One out of two for you there. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the Mavericks winning the series. I think this is where the lack of cat. Yeah. I, I, I just... Look, I really believe in Dallas right now. Their also, defense is good. Anthony Luka, Edwards taking them to the finals seems a little bit it's of a, a big stretch. task. It's a big task for sure. And and yeah, it's just look, the Wolves are great. I just think that what the Mavs are doing right now, they're just a better team currently. And yeah. and Luca is that guy. He's that good. A lot of texts in this series. I'll say that. A lot of T's <laughs> flying around in this series. Yeah. Any any series where you've got Doncic and Pat Bev. There's going to be a lot of teas. I need it to happen now. Yeah. So we get to the finals. We've got the eight seed Brooklyn Nets taking on the five seed Dallas Mavericks. Mm-hmm. The Mavericks first start today appearance in the finals. Mm-hmm. Good for them. You are crowning the champion. Who is winning this series? The Brooklyn Nets. I, I agree with that. Yeah. You get Kyrie for four games. Yep. Yeah. KD is not going to lose KD. to Luca to LD. <laughs> KD to LD. Yeah, no, KD is going to make him take an L. Is that no? I tried. You tried. You can't win them all. Yeah. No, all right. Kevin Durant's going to absolutely. He he just wouldn't lose to Luca. And also, I don't know. We haven't seen Luca pass the first round, so I don't know how much wear and tear he can handle. Yeah, I he's he just has that kind of psychopath gene where you're yeah, just going to keep going. Yeah, but he's going to get going. so red. He gets so red. He's going to get so red he explodes. 
Okay, fair <laughs> enough. That sounds very gory and violent, and I hope that it doesn't happen. No, I hope so too. But I mean, you see how ready gets. <laughs> Yeah, I can't pass judgment. It's just science at I'm that point. I'm getting sunburned by the light sitting above us right now. That's so, true. <laughs> um, I've got nothing to say there. Okay, so the Nets Yay. finally make a return to the finals and win the championship. Yep. So we're going to play this again in a few weeks. We're going to see who makes it. And then when we get to the actual finals, we're going to tally up who won the most times and see how accurate we were in start today. Hmm. That's, there's a whole <laughs> long con to start Uh-oh. today. Okay, well, I believe in my choices. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break because we're going to check in with Clayton, who is on the road. Clayton is joining us from his hotel room. I I caught up with him earlier in Connecticut for this week's Duo Jam. Clayton, my man, from the road, back with the alternates. How are you, man? Oh, I'm great. Uh, You caught me here on an off day, so... uh nice to relax a little bit it was a kind of crazy few days on the east coast always a bit of a a blur doing the (laughs) uh dc philadelphia new york just like seeing a bunch of people that we know and stuff too so yeah yeah what city are you in right now um i am in uh milton milford connecticut you're in Um, connecticut wow i'm in connecticut yep home of hate breed um <laughs> <laughs> it's also home of the made bed i'm noticing how nice that that bed is behind you and that the sheets are nice and orderly i'm an adult i mean you're proving it i'll say that you're definitely proving it right now very <laughs> proud of you uh Thank you. tour going okay you having fun you you doing doing all the good stuff yeah i'm having a blast on tour man like these uh these shows have been really fun it was a uh, it's been better than expected, I would say. I think I said that before, but, you know, getting out here and interacting with people and kind of playing shows that are our shows and kind of the way that we want to present the songs, because the record that we're promoting is like two years old now almost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a, it's an interesting dynamic going on, but having a blast, like everyone on the tour is amazing. Um, and so, yeah, that being around good people and all that stuff is really good on top of obviously getting to play music and stuff, which is always Rad. fun. Rad. Are you, are you meeting any alts out there? Are you seeing any of the, uh, you know what? The alt army? Some of the alt armies been coming out to the shows. Uh, Hell yeah. people just scream random stuff at me. Um, I <laughs> think like I told you this in, in Austin, this guy walks up to me and, uh, I forget your name. I'm sorry, but he he walked up to me and he's like, "Hey man, like love the show, you know, blah blah blah." Hey, fuck James Harden. He said it so <laughs> hard and loud at me. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> and then like it hit me a few minutes later. I'm like, "Oh, I guess we're in Austin. Maybe he's like a, a maybe he's a Rockets fan. fan who's yeah, feels slighted against him. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, and. To, to this guy's credit, I mean, James hasn't been playing too great recently, so he's probably happy to see that. And yeah, Fair. thank you so much to everybody who has been coming out and saying that they like the show, talking to me about basketball, talking to me about their favorite players and stuff. I, I really enjoy that stuff. So yeah. anyone out there, again, feel free to reach out, come yell at me from the stage, tell me who you hate. I love it. <laughs> Sick. All right. Well, let's get into Duo Jam. Uh, you were not able to play last week, but we're going to recap it anyways, unfortunately. Yep. So last week we had the Blazers versus the Kings. I took the Kings. I had De'Aaron Fox and Domanus Sabonis. Heard of him. Yes, I heard of De'Aaron Fox also, and I only saw him play once because he got injured and only played one of the three games. He put up 33.3 points in his one game. Mm. Great. Love it. <laughs> love that production. Would have loved two more of those. Damana Sabonis, huge week. He had 150.4 points on the week, which gave me 183.7 points. Now, Zach... Uh, the maybe the new co-host of the show. I guess that's that's to be decided. But mm-hmm. he went ahead and he picked the team for the Blazers. So he picked Josh Hart. That was a, a very obvious pick. And Josh had a, a great week. He put up 107.6 points and he took maybe the biggest name in the NBA. Trendon Watford. My who, gambling heads out there now. Yeah, was on a hot streak, <laughs> cooled off a little bit last week. 
and he only put up 82.3 points, but that gave the Blazers 189.9 points. Beat me by 6.2 points. I can't win. I don't know what to do at this point. I don't know what to do. My season is lost. <laughs> I'm like, you've tried. You've tried going against your thought. You tried going with your main thought. I mean, look when when you have Trent and Watford on your team, you know, going against you. Yeah, not much you can do. Not yeah, I was, <laughs> I was I was up against the mountain that is Trendon Watford. I feel like, you know, because we're we're based here in L.A., there's two L.A. teams here. One, everything seems lined up for them and they just can't do it. And one just keeps like just chugging along, keep making it happen. I feel like that's what's happening in Duo Jam this season. Um, I'm unfortunately on the wrong side of that, uh, that Duo Jam alliance there but let's get into this week so we've got the pacers versus the jazz i wanted to pick these two teams because um you know the the jazz have gotten a lot of grief on that show um their fan base has had a colorful history with players um and then the pacers we just talked about yusuf nurkic throwing that kid's phone (laughs) and i want i want both these teams to play each other so i am gonna pick the Pacers. First pick is easy for me. He got traded. We went back and forth on how we felt about it. I love this guy. It's Tyrese Halliburton. This yep. one's easy for me. Yep. Now, my second pick, I actually I went back and forth on this one. And at this point, I don't know if I need to pick logically pick with my heart. I can't win either way. So I just went with a guy that I like. And that's Jalen Smith, who has been really good for the Pacers lately. Um, and so my my duo jam, my duo is Tyrese Halliburton and Jalen Smith for the Pacers. You've got Utah. Tell me who you got coming out of Utah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? Love the Jalen Smith pick, honestly. He's an interesting player to me just to see yeah. like where the rest of his career goes. You know, very rare situation that he's in, like to be picked that high and get traded already and like all that stuff, just super strange. So yeah. interesting player to watch moving forward. Okay, so I got the Jazz. Like you said, we've hated on them way too much. They're a good team. Like, let's just say it. They're a good yeah. team. They've been a good team. They may be boring, but they're a good team. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'm going to go with, you know, my classic. I'm going with the classic NBA Jam style duo. Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert. Now, this might not go well for me. A lot these yeah, guys Donovan's have been a, in and out of the lineup. Yep. Um, and, and so I'm just going for the upside play here, honestly, because I couldn't find somebody else that I love to pick. Um, and Donovan, when he has played, has been good. Yeah, and look, he 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 missed a game last week. But he did play over the weekend. He had a huge game over the weekend. So um, this could be an absolute just bloodbath i could i could i i think i'm gonna get murdered this week but i'm leaning into it now i'm i realize that i'm going against maybe the biggest shark that has ever existed in (laughs) duo jam and so i just have to i have to take my lickens and accept my losses but i don't know It, it could it could work out in my favor you know we're getting close to the playoffs which is a dangerous time for the utah jazz that's right. They're going to keep catching strays on this show and uh, <laughs> and we'll see how this goes. But um, yeah, yeah I, I, I think you picked wisely. It makes sense. It makes sense. And Gobert doesn't really seem like he's going anywhere. And look, the, with the way the West standings are going, the Jazz might be playing really, really hard for these next couple of weeks. These are important if, games for them. These are important yeah. games for them. Yeah. Like the, the standings have gotten really close in the Western Conference. Uh, there's a ton of chance for movement up and down here. And obviously, yeah. With Utah's history the past couple of years in the playoffs, a lot is riding on this for multiple players and coaches and all kinds of people. So there's a lot of incentive for them to win games. Yeah. And a team like the Jazz, I think, is looking at the Warriors and smelling blood in the water. And as we saw in start today, just a little bit ago, right now in the West, these standings kind of mean a lot. They you mean everything. In, you yes. can get in the right bracket and, and things could go really well for you. So, you know, it's totally funny. I agree. Like, I think when we started this, I was kind of looking at it like, eh, you know, whatever. Like, I don't think standings really matter that much. But the more we're looking at it with some of these injuries and, and stuff like that, I think seeding is going to make a huge difference in both conferences. Because in the East, you're looking at 
you know, the nets at the bottom and, and you want to avoid some of these teams. So, um, Absolutely. yeah, we'll, we'll see what the jazz look like. I'm excited to see how this goes. Hopefully I get another win at some point in the season. I don't know if that's guaranteed, but we're going to see what happens. Clayton, it was so good to see you, man. I'm, I'm so good glad, to see you. glad that you got some time off. We are missing you around the studios, despite what Zach and I have been saying. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying, enjoying the show, watching it. It's pretty fun. Uh, See, seeing everybody, you know, obviously Zach's one of my closest friends, love the guy, and uh, Natasha's been fantastic. Um, yeah. So, no, ha- having a ton of fun, like, interacting with the show and, and all that stuff. I got a quick question for you. Can we talk for, for a minute? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Are you watching any NCAA basketball? I really haven't been, if I'm being honest. You know, I, I'm going to say the same. I, I'm usually locked into the tournament. I'm locked into the tournament every year, and... Day one, you know, I turn it on and immediately Kentucky loses. <laughs> immediately. It's just immediately. And and from that point on, I was like, I think this isn't my tournament. I, I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but like my brackets screwed. This is not my tournament. So I haven't been paying enough attention to the tournament. So in the comments, hit us up. Like, tell us what you're seeing in the tournament. I, I need some people to give me the the real stuff that's going on. Obviously I see the headlines. I pay attention to who's winning and stuff like that, but um, we're getting down to the sweet 16. So I'll probably start locking in here at the end and see what's going on with that. That's kind of the thing I'm looking forward to most right now. And in the sweet 16, we do have some huge NBA prospects. Duke is there, obviously Arizona, Houston, Villanova. So some huge program. Gonzaga, obviously, Chet. Yeah. Um, so it's tons of NBA prospects here at the end. So really exciting to see these guys. We will we will follow it a lot more closely next year once this empire expands and we have the alternatives junior our, uh, <laughs> yeah. our offshoot and, and we yeah. will just follow uh, the NCAA. But yeah, I haven't been watching. I, I'll probably do the same thing as you is like, you know, it dwindles down a little more i'll pay attention but i didn't make a bracket or anything like that i don't i don't know enough i would just go off of like mascots that i like honestly that would be like the most of my research i, I mean totally fair totally fair i i picked arizona to win and they're still in it so okay. i have that going for me okay all right well we'll see what happens clayton so good to see you man uh we will catch up with you uh in another city on another day but, yeah uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, if you don't mind, I will plug a little here. Please. I got some shows coming up. Uh, so when you're listening to this on Friday, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, one of my my brain is not good. <laughs> uh, tour is poison for your brain. Okay, so Tuesday, I'm going to be in Hamden, Connecticut, at the Space Ballroom. Military Gun and Scal have joined the tour officially. Um, two really fantastic bands. So that that's on Tuesday, Wednesday, Paradise Rock Club in Boston, and then head up to Canada Thursday and Friday, uh, Montreal at the Theater Fairmount, and Friday Toronto at Velvet Underground. So all my Canadians out there, let's talk Scotty Barnes. Awesome, love it. We'll see you soon, buddy. See you soon. All right, that is gonna be today's show. Natasha, thank you so much for coming back. Oh, thank you for having me. Literally any time. I'll just camp outside the studio until you're willing to let me back How on. How about next week? Great. See okay. you then. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we appreciate you coming on. Everybody loves it when you join the show. Thank you. Uh, I cannot wait to see the the bare knuckle boxing match between you and Zach. That is going to surely be entertaining. Yeah. Um, I'll maybe, start training. Maybe we'll do that next week. So okay. yeah, use your weekend wisely. Yeah. Thank you all so much for joining us. I will be back in a couple days with an all new episode, an all new guest, one that I'm very excited we're gonna have some some very cool conversations with. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about it. So you'll have to stick around, check out the next episode. Uh, we are gonna end today's episode with a song from Scowl, who you just heard Clayton talking about. They just joined their tour. And the song is called My Turn to Play off of the Reality After Reality cassette, which was self-released in 2019. We'll see you all soon. Thank you so much. Yeah.